Hey there, if you're watching this, you're probably wondering what MERS is. Well, in this video, I'll be covering the basics of MERS and the rules that govern it, along with some of its uses and the devices that use it. So let's get started. So what does MERS stand for? Well, MERS is an acronym for Multi-Use Radio Service, and the Multi-Use Radio Service is a set of frequencies that uses channels in the 151 to 154 MHz spectrum range. The most common use of MERS channels is for short distance, two-way communications using small, portable, handheld radios that function similar to walkie-talkies, as well as security systems, doorbells, and a whole host of other domestic and commercial applications. MERS is in fact very similar to the GMRS, or General Mobile Radio Service, and the FRS, or Family Radio Service. If you want to check out our video on GMRS, that link will be up above. MERS is authorized five channels that were previously in the Industrial Business Radio Service that were known as the color dot frequencies of the FCC rules. In fact, it is still used by Walmart and Sam's Club for their employee radios. It was established by the FCC in the fall of 2000, and MERS created a radio service allowing for operation in a narrow selection of the VHF band. So now that we got all that boring history and stuff out of the way, what can you use it for? Well, the FCC formally defines MERS as a private, two-way, short-distance voice or data communication service for personal or business activities of the general public. This means that MERS stations can be used to transmit voice, data, or image signals, and can be used for telecommand and telemetry functions. Examples of this include short-distance communications, such as with the VTEC MERS V1 radio, security cameras, wireless weather stations, security systems, remote controls, and sensors such as the Dakota Alert Motion Sensor Kit. So do you need a license to use MERS? No. MERS is what's considered licensed by rule. This means an individual license is not required for a person to operate a MERS transmitter for personal use. There's also no age restriction regarding who may operate a MERS transmitter, but there are some rules that need to be followed when it's in use. Let's go over those rules. Number one, antenna height. The highest point of any MERS station antenna must not be more than 18.3 meters or 60 feet above the ground, or 6.1 meters, 20 feet above the highest point of the structure in which it is mounted. And they kind of base that off of whichever one is tallest. Number two, interconnectivity. MERS stations are prohibited from interconnection with a public switch network. This means the connection of a MERS station with the facilities of a public telephone network to allow the transmission of messages and signals between the two is not allowed. This is included because some ham radio networks also integrate with hardline or wireless telephone systems to basically let you call a phone over the radio. Number three, transmission duration. MERS stations may not be operated in the continuous carrier transmit mode. This means there has to be a break between the transmissions. It can't be a constant signal but the guidelines don't specify when you have to do this or for how long. Number four, transmitter power. And this is probably the most important one. Each MERS transmitter must be designed such that the transmitter power output does not exceed two watts under normal operating conditions. You can use a stronger radio, but its transmission power has to be somehow limited to two watts. Now, MERS is not heavily enforced or monitored, but the FCC does issue fines. So if you want to use it at a stronger power, you can do that at your own risk. Number five, repeaters. The use of repeaters are not allowed with MERS, though how that would be enforced effectively, I'm not entirely sure. Number six, frequency range. As we mentioned up above, there are five VHF channels that are allotted for shared use in the MERS system. These channels, designated by their center frequencies in the megahertz range, are as follows. 151.82, 151.88, 151.94, 154.57, and 154.6 megahertz. Each MERS transmitter must be designed to transmit on one or more of these channels. Number seven, aircraft. MERS is not allowed to be used on board any aircraft in flight. So that kind of brings me to my next point. Where can MERS be used? Well, it's a pretty easy list. It can be used within all 50 states of the United States, as well as the District of Columbia, because they're special, and any U.S. territories. But this also carries over to any vessel of the United States with the permission of the captain while the vessel is traveling either domestically or internationally. 
But that's pretty much it. As long as you follow these rules and read up on the regulations, you can use MERS for just about anything. So if you and your friends, teammates, or family are looking for a radio service that isn't too crowded and doesn't require a license, MERS may be a pretty good option for you. Be sure to check out the MERS radios and devices I found on Amazon with the links below to see if maybe they might fit your needs. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below or contact us at coptalks at gmail.com. If you would, please also like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us a lot and you can stay up to date with all our current content. Check out our other videos on radios, MREs, guns, and gear. We post every Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time and also drop other videos in between. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, check out the links in the description for affiliates, merch, and more. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'll catch you in the next one, but until then, spend time with your family, let your friends know you appreciate them, and remember to always be kind. Thank you. Thank you.